It's all colored up. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Hey, welcome back. My name is Jay Siemens, and today we're going sight fishing for trout. First thing we want to do is figure out, you know, where we want to set up. This is pretty important to be on a, a key spot. Um, I don't even know what I'm saying. Important to be on a key spot. Let's see how the visibility is. Got my crappie rig on from last video. We're gonna, it's nice and bright, so I'm just gonna drop it down and see what we're dealing with. I think we're just too deep. That's how deep we are. That's like, Five feet. I'm gonna I'm gonna go quite a bit shallower here, right onto this point we're beside. I'm gonna put a minnow and a jaw jacker out because it's gonna take a while to set up, and who knows, maybe we'll catch a brookie while we're waiting. That's the goal, brook trout. My hope is we catch one before the shack's even set up, just like that. All right, let's drop a shallower hole. All right, let's see what we're dealing with. Oh yeah, it's gonna do good. I don't think we want to go any shallower. I don't think we want to go any deeper. I'm gonna bring out the saw. All right, check it out. This big, mean looking saw. You can get these, you can order them at Cabela's. I think Reed Sports in the States has them. Pretty specialized piece of gear, but if you ever want to sight fish for anything, you probably want to invest in this. One option is you could use your auger or chisel and, and work all the way around. It's a lot easier in early ice, but just to be able to saw the hole you want with this and in one big sheet, it's pretty ideal. Before we go any further, if you're gonna sight fish, Please be safe about it. Please, uh, you know, mark the hole when you're done. We're gonna be leaving a big hole in the ice. And uh, yeah, safety first, you know. I think the hole's gonna freeze overnight, but put some sticks over it, put a log over it, mark it out so people can see, so they don't, you know, snowmobile into it in the dark or, or whatever else. So we're gonna cut a hole. Uh, not too big, I'm fishing by myself. We're gonna throw the shack over top, but uh, here we go. Feel the burn. Wham! All right, we broke it free. Now we're gonna push it under, get a little momentum. We got probably five, six inches of ice here. A couple cold nights has really helped it out. One of the best ways to ice fish, so interactive. You never get that close and personal with a fish until you sight fish, because you're like feet away. Fish doesn't know you're there. You're staring from above, it's pretty neat. Oh no, did I push the ice chunk all the way here? Oh my goodness! Oh, I should have seen that coming. That could have been bad. I looked, oh, oh man, I don't even want to talk about it. So that big chunk of ice, I actually pushed all the way over here and that's when I saw down my hole and yeah, about that. Okay, don't screw it up, Jay. Let's get back to the chef. Here we go, going inside. And this visibility is better than I thought. Offering number one, pink and white marabou jig. A little bit bigger than maybe I'd want to use, but uh, I think it'll just be so much easier for you guys to see. Oh my goodness, guys. This isn't even fair. I'm gonna have this little panfish rod dead sticked since I pulled my jaw jacker out. Welcome to Fishing with Jay. Today we're sight fishing for trout. It's early ice in Northwest Ontario. We're looking for brook trout. We have set up in about three to four feet of water inside of our Eskimo pop-up. We've got the FS5 filming 4K footage shooting into the water. And we have the Sony A7 III shooting the wide angle of the shack to show the angler set the hook on a behemoth brook trout. All right, we're gonna switch it up and put the tiny dinner bell on. There's another one. We got two! Oh my goodness! We got two! We got two! <laughs> Get in! Oh my goodness! 
I dedicate that to Aaron Weeb. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. What a rodeo. What a freaking rodeo. Oh. How about that double header? That was absolutely insane. One of the coolest sight fishing moments I've ever had. This guy is going back too. They are so tough to hold. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. That was probably all out of focus and absolutely brutal. Guys, this camera had shut off. Luckily we had the underwater cam filming that. Hadn't seen any fish yet. Two fish came in at once and I hooked both of them. That was incredible, incredible. Aaron did the exact same thing in a video a couple years ago. Hello, hello. Oh, that looks like a nice one. There's two of them. Is the other one gonna eat the other bait? Oh, we got a double, we got a double. I don't know which one's bigger. And that's exactly what I thought of when that second fish came in. I'm like, I cannot believe this is happening. And they both ate so close. I was just toying with that one fish, trying to get him higher in the water column to get a good shot of him eating. Then the second one came in. Oh my goodness. That was the coolest sight fishing moment I've ever had. And we're gonna show you what we were using. This was my main aggressive jigging rod right here. This is the Drench, the 39 medium light. We got a 2,500 size Stratic on here, probably a little oversized, eight pound braid, eight pound fluoro, and a little gold dinner bell. Sweet little package, such like, yeah, just perfect for smaller stock trout. And then the dead stick, this was just my, my crappie setup from the other day, but uh, a little tungsten jig with a, with a dragonfly. Uh, in hindsight, yes, I wish I would have had a net. Uh, and then I held that up to you guys. The camera was in manual focus. The exposure was bad with the windows. I, I'm sorry, but seeing both of them eat, so cool. We are gonna catch more. We've only been fishing like half an hour and had two come in at once. I love sight fishing. I just love it. It's just, that was insane. There's one. Got him. Lost him. I just lost him. He's back. He's gonna bite again. He's gonna bite again. This one's all colored up. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness. He missed it. Don't eat the other one. Don't eat the other one. He's coming back. I played with him a little too much, I think. There's a fine line because I want to tease him up as high as possible to get amazing footage, right? But fish are just a little more comfortable closer to the bottom, I find. Yeah, we're fishing in. Oh, let me see. Oh, uh, might be almost four feet. Four feet of water, clarity's decent. Maybe, maybe three and a half, four. Yeah, probably somewhere in there. There's one, there's a nice one. Got him, got him. Oh, so cool. Oh, and he jumped out of the hole. Oh. That was kind of dumb. He jumped that way and then I pulled him this way. He was just zoned in on this little plastic. That was so cool. That was a nice fish. Holy smokes, that one just came in on a rope. That was my biggest mistake. Forgot the net. Landing net's nice, you can keep the fish in it. Wow, it's been good action. I think being quiet when you're sight fishing is super important in the shallow water. Like I've just seen so many fish spook on live scope. Yeah, I think it really pays off. I don't know if whispering helps much, but it makes it more intense. So there's a couple things to look for when you're thinking about sight fishing. A couple things that'll help you out. Yeah, I mean, number one, it's kind of the most obvious, but you want to pick a clear lake, muddy, dirty lakes. It's just, it's going to be impossible. It's not going to be enjoyable. Pick, the, I mean, obviously the clearer the lake, the better, right? Like I would always favor a little bit shallower just so you, I mean, if, if, depends if you're filming or not. If you're not, if I wasn't filming, I would be fishing probably a touch deeper, but just for the sake of getting cool shots, a little bit shallower. And then as far as setting up your shack, uh, yeah, a nice dark shack like this to, to, to look down a hole that works. You throw a jacket over your head. You can totally do that too. It's not as comfortable. You don't have that same field of view, but hey, throw a jacket over your head, jig with your hands. You can see some cool, super cool stuff and some cool fish interactions. But now we've got the big pop-up Eskimo. I pack the snow around the edge, but you can also clear the snow off the ice and that'll actually help light penetration as well. You know, prime time is going to be a little tougher to see. Sunrise, sunset, it's going to be pretty difficult to sight fish depending on where you're at and how deep you are you're gonna have your best visibility at the middle of the day this is an absolute blast if you're looking at getting new anglers into ice fishing this is so interactive you know and you don't need to focus on some some trophy lake it doesn't need to be 20 inch trout it could be 
10 inch trout, eight inch trout. When you see them bite, it does not matter what size they are. It is so exhilarating. And every fish, every fish that comes in, I'm just like buzzing because I'm like, this is so cool. Even though I've done this a bunch, it's tough to explain. It's so cool to see the one-on-one -on -one interaction with that fish. It's so intimate. That fish is four feet away from me, circling around hunting. And um, yeah, that's my spiel. There's one. Oh, he missed it. Come on. Come on. That's a nice orange one. Sam packed me a lunch today, which normally I don't eat when I'm fishing, but, but I wasn't going to say no. I'll dedicate this next trout to Sam and her sandwich making. Got him. Oh. Come on, give me another chance. He came in so fast. He's coming back, he's coming back. Come on. I missed him again. There's two. That's a nice one. I'm gonna put him in the pail for one second. All right, guys. The action's been good. I had two fish come in there, almost caught both at once, decided to just land this one. Little cromer, nice little trout. Going right back. It just, it happens so fast. I haven't seen fish for such a long time, but I wanna be quiet and get back because there was another fish down there. There was the one that was circling that hit once and then the second one came in and then it started splashing and I kind of lost what was going on, but Without a doubt, sight fishing is my favorite way to ice fish. Like, oh. There's one, look at this. Oh, I missed him. Oh man, he's coming back. He's coming back. He wants a live minnow, that's what he wants. I might have to give him a live minnow. You know what, that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna take the little offering away and we're gonna drop down a minnow under a couple split shots and we will see if live bait out fishes the jigging spoon. Yeah, these trout can be kind of line shy too, so plural leader I think is pretty important. But these fish are just cruising. Trout, I mean, there are key spots. Like if you remember my other video, I, I fished in front of a a moose nest, a beaver lodge. Um, you know, I think there are key spots that hold them, maybe specific break lines, points, beaver lodges, but I, I think they're just cruising. They're just moving a lot of the time back and forth. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at that. He didn't even care about the live minnow. All right, you're going in the pail. Nice fish. Wow, that fish just came streaking in. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at this trout. Beautiful white and pink on the fins. And just like that fish came in so aggressive, he did not care at all about the live minnow. <laughs> just shows you live bait is not everything. That fish wanted a piece of shiny metal. All right, that's like three that we've caught, four. Lost one on the surface, missed a couple. It's been, it's been impressive. All right, the dinner bell. Oh, there's a nice one, there's a nice one. Oh, that's one of the biggest ones I've seen all day. Come on. Oh, he's back. Yes, yes! Oh, man! Oh, this one's fighting. This one's fighting. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Come on. No! <laughs> Oh, that was it? That was the biggest one we've seen all day. Oh, he just came and inhaled it. Oh!
Guys, what a day. What a day. Just, oh man, you know, obviously I'm frustrated that I lost him, but just seeing that eat. My goodness, I hope you guys like this as much as I do. He seemed like he didn't care, and then he came back just charged up. Wow. We got 4K on the big camera. So what that allows me to do, I don't film in 4K that much, um, but I do film in 4K for situations where I want to crop in. Cropping in being zooming in essentially not losing quality. So the thing about 4K versus typical 1080p, that's how I post most of my videos is, um, you know, 1080 quality, that's your standard HD. When you film something in 4K, it's four times the resolution. So what that means is if you're filming hunting or if you're filming a situation like this where you might want to zoom in, you might not want to, you have the ability to zoom in four times as close and still keep that HD resolution. So that's when I use 4K, you know, when you're hunting and you can't get exactly as far in as you need, then you do that. There's, there's not many clients I have that want 4K and for YouTube stuff, a lot of people are watching on their phones and even when you're watching on TV, um, you know, 4K isn't necessary. Oh, here we go. Oh my goodness. Guys, oh, he's back. He's back. Yes. Get in here. Oh, oh, oh. All right. All right, guys. So what I'm doing once I land these fish is I throw them in my bucket with some water in here. Give him a little drink so he stays healthy. Open the windows. Hold it up to the camera so you guys can see. And put them back. This is this has been such a fun day. I was on the fence about coming out fishing today, and uh, I was like, no, I I want to I want to sight fish. I've been sight fishing a long time, and uh, this exceeded exceeded expectations. So cool. Oh my goodness. I just pulled, I just turned the camera off and two trout just came in. Unreal. Two brookies just swam in. I just turned the camera off. Oh my goodness, they are both nice size. You're kidding me. You're absolutely kidding me. He's coming back. He's gonna eat the middle. Got him. That's a nice one. Wow, we were done. I turned the camera off. That might be the biggest one of the day. I was ready to call it a day and all of a sudden there was two nice big brookies swimming underneath. Look at the beautiful pink hue on this one. Just gorgeous. She is frisky, ready to go back. Oh man. I thought it was over. I, I, I guess we're gonna fish a little bit longer. I don't know, that was ridiculous. Okay, now we really gotta go. Okay, we are actually gonna pack up now. All right, guys, we're done, I'm packing up. If you've not tried sight fishing before, I highly recommend it. The biggest thing to remember, you know, just use common sense, mark the hole when you're done. Like, put some sticks over it. Um, you know, often your sight holes are gonna be near shore as well, which is, you know, a, a safety thing. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Well, I love her, but I love to fish. Spend out day out on this lake. Brook trout are all I catch. But today Sam met me at the door. Said I would have to choose if I hit that side fishing hole again. She'd be packing all her things and she'd be gone by noon.